Good morning. God's blessings on you today, and, and especially as we gather together, uh, even if we are still remote and, and uh, in separate locations, but we are together in Christ, and God's Spirit is with us. So I pray God's blessings on us as we worship together today. Um, we'll begin this morning with a thank you uh, from the preschool board to Ruth Rhodes, who has been our preschool director for these past 26 years and, and has recently resigned. You, I'm sure you're aware of that. But uh, the preschool board wanted to offer their thanks and, and to express their appreciation to Ruth. So we will begin with that today. Good morning. On behalf of the Little Pilgrims Preschool Board and what I know is 26 years of community here in Pulag, we would like to thank Teacher Ruth, Teacher Ruth Rose, for her 26 years of um, expertise and love and dedication to Little Pilgrims and the entire community. Uh, I started calculating and I thought probably average about 50 students a year maybe, give or take. 50 to 100. Yeah, yeah. between 50 to 100 mm -hmm. a year on average, some higher, some lower. And you multiply that by how many family members there are and that calculates to literally thousands and thousands of people over the year that Ruth has touched in more than one way, um, just by her gentleness, her love, her um, care and compa or compassion for students and their families as these little guys come into the preschool and they get this strong foundation, they take it back out into the community and they flourish. I know on a personal level, all three of our kids went through Little Pilgrims uh, from Nick holding onto my leg and Ruth pulling him off <laughs> and he doesn't do that anymore probably because she got, broke him of the habit. <laughs> and, he, uh, to this day, we are friends with some of the friends that he met in preschool, uh, the Pfeiffers for one and others. And all around, you see people and you meet people who have that connection to Little Pilgrims. It, I've been all over the place and people are like, oh, well, my kids went to Little Pilgrims Preschool and my kids went to Little Pilgrims Preschool and it's just bustling around here and full of energy and excitement and we just thank Ruth for all that she has done over these years um, to reach out to this community and bring these families here and um, just care and love them so much. So we made, we have a little album full of some notes that some people have written and I know you've received Bye. more notes so there are places in the back you can stick extra notes um, for you nice. and yeah. then I will, Maya would you like to say something? Why don't you take off the mask? <laughs> <laughs> I'll put mine back on. Then. I just wanted to say thank you for being open to having me the very first year I came <laughs> and you were booked with so many people and so many little kids that you took the time to let me join the very first time. Thank you. I know. I just, oh my gosh, you are the best story. <laughs> Your mom called me and said, please, she needs preschool. <laughs> and it was so, it was so amazing. You didn't speak any English and you knew your name and you said, I'm Maya. <laughs> and you walked around saying, I'm Maya for the first couple days and then you learned English and then it hasn't stopped, has it? <laughs> It's been wonderful. And I had your kids and your kids. Oh, oh my gosh. Can I say a couple words? Yes. <laughs> okay. So as far as the board part of it, I mean, we all see Ruth and all of her glory with all the kids and how much she loves them and, and they love her and how much they learn. But on the board half of it, she has done an amazing job running a budget, dealing with all kinds of changes and the flex that we've had over the last four years with teachers and new programs and and everything else has just been amazing, and it's been so much fun to work with you, and I will so miss you. <laughs> and I'm glad that we've become close friends over this, and that will not end. No, nope. so, not that at all. No, I'm, we're not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I just wanted to thank you for everything you did for my girls. Just amazing. And um, this is from the board, just a little thank you from the four of us. Oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you so much, thank you. Oh my gosh. I think of um, just even thinking of these families and the fact that they came in and I, you know, Nick and Nathan being so quiet and, and just blossoming and 
um, Victoria, you know, you know, figuring out, you know, who she was and, and where she was going and, and, and Natasha, just her spunk, you know. <laughs> And then, you know, the DeBoer twins, and I have twins, so it's like, oh my gosh, we have a connection, and talking about it's okay, you know, it's okay to be different, it's okay to not be the same, and it's okay to have, to have differences in your life, and, and to be a different person than your twin, and that's such a good thing to know at this stage. And then, um, Bobby, <laughs> which just makes us laugh, you know, just, just, um, just all the spunk and happiness, and the joy that she brings and um, you know being able to tell parents that you know what they're not the same as their siblings and that's all right <laughs> you know, I can remember telling that to one parent is like yeah you know you have a, just a different kid here and that's okay <laughs> so but thank you guys for this thank you I love what I have done here at Pilgrim I love the legacy that I've left behind and I know that it will still stride on um, it will succeed um, Janae and Amy are amazing, and I think you will, you will find that they will do a fine job and do a wonderful job to bring this program back after COVID, um, you know, bring everything back to normal. Um, we're all looking for a little normal. Yes. So, but thank you. Thank you to Pilgrim. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Rochelle. Thank you to the office, Melody, um, you know, all of the people that have been there, Heidi, for me. Um, Shannon, that have, have really made a difference in, in how we've done this. Jeff, all these years, um, so many pastors, so many people. But thank you for everything that you guys have given to me and giving me a chance to, to make my mark up here on South Hill. Thank you. As we enter now into worship, we begin with our confession coming before God and um, confessing our sin and asking for God's forgiveness and, and hearing that forgiveness, that God forgives our sins and, and uh, that we are beloved children of God and that nothing can, can change that. So uh, we worship today by uh, blessing the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we were made, who claims us and calls us beloved. And so let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, we confess we are not faithful in using the gifts you have given us. We forget the least of our sisters and brothers. We do not see your image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides us as communities and as nation. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus opens the door and welcomes us home. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. So let us now live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, be with you always. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Please join me as we pray together the prayer of the day. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today's psalm lesson is from Psalm 70. Hasten, O God, to save me. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. May those who want to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. May those who say to me, Aha, aha, turn back because of their shame. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving help always say, The Lord is great. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come quickly to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. Lord, do not delay. First lesson is from the book of Amos, chapter 5, verses 18 to 24. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be darkness, not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion, only to meet a bear. As though he entered his house and rested his hand on the wall, only to have a snake bite him. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light, pitch dark without a ray of brightness? I hate, I despise your religious festivals. Your assemblies are a, a stench to me. But even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I will have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs, I will not listen to the music of your harps. But let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never-failing stream. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. day will come and war will be no more the sickness in our hearts it will be cured we'll gather at the streams of mercy and put our weapons down together we'll behold your glory where hope is found so let justice roll Nest and never flowing stream. Let justice roll down like a river. His righteousness and never flowing stream. When the nations come from every tribe and tongue, hand in hand as one. Hate will be undone While freedom marches on Our banner will be love Then the world will see and feel His healing come So let justice roll down Like a river His righteousness and Justice roll down like a river. His righteousness and ever flowing stream. There will be a day when love has its way. There will be a place where peace will stand. Just 
dust is rolled down like a river. His righteousness and never flowing stream. The second lesson is from the first Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, but that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so as we believe that God, along with Jesus, those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive who are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the tri trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with those in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we'll be with the Lord forever. Therefore, Encourage one another with these words. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading today is from the 25th chapter of Matthew, beginning at verse 1. This is Jesus' parable of the ten virgins, or other translations say ten bridesmaids. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the bridesmaids woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The, bride, the bridesmaids who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. The gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I've been uh, actually having a little trouble with candles lately, in particular this candle. I was uh, taking candles into our staff meeting, and a candle can represent the presence of the Holy Spirit, so that was my hope. But last Tuesday at the staff meeting, the, the candle went out in the, in the middle of the meeting. I'd run out of oil. That actually happened um, recently, maybe a month ago, in the middle of my sermon one Sunday. And so I can understand, I have a sense for what the, uh, these foolish bridesmaids, bridesmaids must have felt. The candle, again, is, is meant to be a symbol and can be used as a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And the hope is, whether I'm using it as staff meeting or I use it for worship on Sunday morning, is that it centers us, calls attention and reminds us that the Holy Spirit is here among us acknowledges the Holy Spirit's presence and invites us to look for that presence, to look for uh, the Spirit's leading and guiding and transforming presence among us. Now, as you know, these wise bridesmaids do not have this same problem with their lamps, with their light. They are ready and they are present when the bridegroom finally comes. Their lamps are shining brightly and so they go with him into the wedding feast. Now, just to be clear, in the New Testament, 
Christ is referred to as the bridegroom. So in this parable, Jesus is talking about himself and his, his return, his coming again. This parable takes place in the midst of a lot of this end, end times imagery where, um, where we are waiting for Christ's return. And the wedding feast that is portrayed here is the kingdom of heaven. This parable is, again, one more picture about what the kingdom of heaven is like. This is actually the last reference to the kingdom of heaven is like, and then the story unfolds. So after the Beatitudes have told us who will inherit the kingdom of heaven, and after numerous other parables that Jesus tells about what this kingdom of heaven is like, and he paints picture after picture, uh, showing us and inviting us to see what the kingdom of heaven is like, now we have this last parable showing us that the kingdom of heaven is characterized as a joyous wedding banquet filled with light at the bridegroom's return. So this kingdom of heaven is all about light. It's about light chasing away darkness. It's about a new day dawning. And so as Jesus begins his ministry all the way back in chapter 4, Matthew quotes the prophet Isaiah, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. So consider this in this theme of, of light in, in darkness, light coming into the midst of darkness. Think about what we are trying to build here in this place. What are we about? What is our purpose? What are we building here? Of course, we want to be like the wise bridesmaids in, in Jesus' parable with lamps shining brightly. And Jesus even says, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. A town built, built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, Jesus says, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And so another point to clarify, like this candle as a symbol of the Holy Spirit and like that city on a hill that Jesus talks about, our light is not something we generate ourselves, but is the Holy Spirit shining in us. It is the light of Christ among us as this pilgrim congregation shining in the community around us, proclaiming life, in, and, and, proclaiming life and healing in Jesus' name. God's light is shining in the darkness, and the work of being the people of light is to reflect God's light in the world. As a community of disciples, as followers of Jesus, the flow of what we do and who we are, what we're about, is to gather together, is to be transformed in our gathering, in our community, and then to be sent out again back into the world. And there are various ways that we gather together. We gather in worship, we gather in study groups, we gather together in fellowship. Now, of course, that's a little more difficult today, but we long for that time when we can gather again in person in all of these forms, and we wait and we hope and we long for that time to come again. But even now, we are still meeting. We are still gathered together in the name of Jesus Christ, and we are still being transformed by the word. We hear the word, of course, in our scripture readings on Sunday morning. We hear the word as we participate together, as we read through the Bible, the whole Bible, in this read scripture experience that we're in the midst of. And, and also in our other studies that we gather together. We also hear the word as we support and care for each other, the nature of being a community, the purpose of our fellowship. In each of these ways, we, as we come together, we hear the word. Not only do we hear, but we listen. And as we listen, we come to know, and then in our knowing, we are transformed. And then as we are transformed, we are sent back out into the world. And we are different now as before we came together. This transforming work of the Holy Spirit renews and strengthens and equips us to be light in the world. And certainly the, our world today needs some light, doesn't it? 
needs it more than ever. The world today is a pretty dark place. We had a, just had a contentious election that is, is still not decided. We have a roaring pandemic and disagreement on how to deal with it. We have a climate of politics that seems to be more about exercising power and control than it is about working for the good of the people that they were elected to serve. Now, you may have heard, if you want the world to be a kinder place, then be kind. In other words, be the solution. Ann and I went for a walk last weekend, and we went up, drove up to South Prairie and then walked on the bike path there up towards Buckley. And there was a house right next to the path that had a sign that was talking about goodness, and I don't remember exactly what it said, but in the midst of what it was saying about goodness, some of the letters were painted a different color. And so you could also read, be the good. The same thing, be the solution, be the good. And we can do that with a lot of different things that we lament is lacking in our world today, in the midst of this darkness all around us. Unity and peace and love, we could be the solution in all these cases. So in a world of darkness where we long for the light, we can be the light. This is the transformation that happens through the Holy Spirit and in the hearing and coming to know the word. Right after this collection of, again, end times sayings and parables, right after this, in the next chapter, chapter 26, Jesus begins his passion which leads him to the cross. And Jesus' cross informs us about what it means to be light for the world. Humility and and serving others and even laying down our lives for, for another. Loving our neighbor, caring for the least of these whom we met back in the Beatitudes. And justice flowing like a river, as we heard from the prophet Amos this morning. Now certainly the cross is an example for us to follow. Take up our cross and follow him. But it's more than that. The cross is the means of our transformation. Jesus' cross is more than showing us how to be the light. It is our light. So now as we consider, as we we think about this being sent back out as light into the world, we should again clarify that the kingdom of heaven, despite what this parable says about those foolish bridesmaids being locked out of the wedding feast, The kingdom of heaven is not about locked doors. It's not about keeping people out. The kingdom of heaven is not an exclusive country club for members only. Instead, it is the source of light for the world, for a world living today in darkness. At the end of the Bible, the last book is the book of Revelation, and at the end of Revelation is a vision describing the new Jerusalem, coming out of the clouds and coming down to earth. And so Revelation says this city, this new Jerusalem, does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it. For the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light. On no day will will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. On no day will its gates ever be shut for there will be no night there. In other words, it's the darkness that creates the fear and the danger for us that causes us to lock our doors and to try to hide and protect ourselves. But in this city of light, there is no need for locked doors. In fact, the kingdom of heaven is not hidden behind locked doors intent on keeping people out. Instead, it has an open door policy. It is filled with light and the welcome mat is out. The promise is, as the kingdom of heaven already is, so too will be the kingdoms of the earth at Christ's return, at the bridegroom's coming again. And in the meantime, we wait. We wait in hope. The bridegroom is seemingly absent, but we know he is on his way. And we know, too, that he is faithful to his promises. We have heard these promises. We have come to know them as we have been gathered in times of worship, in study, and in fellowship. And so we now can wait and hope because we know. We know God is faithful. And we are not left alone in our waiting. God has given us the Holy Spirit as our comforter and our guide. 
Now, keeping this candle burning requires tending it. I, I merely have to make sure that it still has some oil in it. It is the same for our faith. We need to tend to our faith. And so we gather together. And as we, are do, as we do, we are transformed by the word and also the heart-shaping Holy Spirit. And then we are sent back out as light into the world. Amen. Continue to ask God's blessings on the pledges and time and talent sheets during our stewardship drive. So let our prayers begin, begin there. Generous and life-giving God, as we bring our pledges, committing to our participation in the work of your church in the world, we pray they will be pleasing in your sight. All that we have, all that we are, come from you. And as you have so richly blessed us, what we give back to you in the, form of our, in the form of our time, talent, and treasure is our expression of gratitude and thanksgiving. We hope to be generous to others as you have first been generous with us. So bless our pledges and commitments, bless our work in your kingdom, and may all we do be to the glory of your name. Amen. And continuing with the prayers of the church, Looking for the coming of the bridegroom, we pray for the inbreaking kingdom of heaven, inbreaking coming into our world, and Christ coming to us. Let us pray. Holy God, rouse us to heartfelt praise as we worship you. In our worship, renew and strengthen us in this time and place, and send us out again to serve you in love of our neighbor and all of creation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creator God, you continually surprise and delight us with the beauty of your creation, especially the brilliant colors we have been enjoying this fall. Bless all who work to preserve and protect and tend the beauty we see all around us. Help us to live in harmony with creation as good stewards. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Judge, we, we pray that you would let justice roll down like waters over this world, reign over the courtrooms in every land, in the hearts of our, law, of our law enforcement and those accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail, especially our current struggles with racism and instances of police brutality. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for an end to this pandemic. Comfort those who grieve, heal those who are ill, protect more from getting sick. We pray that you would continue to watch over all who fight against this disease. Give them rest, keep them healthy, lift their spirits in hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God of mercy, 
We pray for those who are, are in pain and ill and isolated, who mourn or are angry or in doubt. Reach out with your healing touch to those who suffer and make their lives and their bodies whole again. We pray especially for those we lift to you either out loud or silently in our hearts. We pray especially today for healing, for strength and courage and perseverance, for your continued presence with Jan and Frank and Phil, Penny and Jess, Roger. Be with Tony's family as they grieve the loss of his cousin Shani. Be with Crystal and, and her family as they celebrate the life of her father Mike this week. We pray that you'd be with Lewis and his whole family, the great grandson of Dave and Diane. And we pray for your presence and healing for Doug Oakman's mother, diagnosed with COVID. These we lift you in prayer. May they join their voices in a new song of praise as you call each by name and claim them as your own. Help them to know your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Holy Protector, as we observe and, and uh, remember those on this, this Veterans Day this week, we pray that you would guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel and their families, comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty, heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and, and hold in your loving embrace all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Pour out again today your Spirit on us and all the world. Unite into one body, people of every nation and tongue, for your kingdom work of renewal and restoration. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Join me as we pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table. Take a moment and share, share Holy Communion with one another. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, may our God give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen.